there hasn't there hasn't been a new asset class created since the bond market in 16 well now there's a new one and it's the digital asset space question are you participating hey what's going on guys it's the crypto siege with another day in the life and the crazy life that is the digital asset space what is going on how is everyone doing today it's a great day to be in a digital asset space, guys. I got to tell you, it's a great day to be in the digital asset space. TJ Jackson, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Legendary's in the building. What's going on? Luis Cuevas. Luis, how are you, brother? Como esta? Out of the way, Jay. How's it going, Siege? It's going outstanding, brother. Good to see you. Jay Fretless, hello. What's up, Jay Fretless? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw Mickey B. Fresh said that Codius could do all things Chainlink can do. But I don't know. I have some link. Well, I think I had or have. I don't know if I still have some link, though. Let me see if I still have. I don't know if I do anymore. I don't think I, I don't know. I had some. I diversify a little bit, and then I'm like, you know what? Set a new target. I don't know. We're we'll get ready to hit a big milestone today. Did you guys get your stimulus checks today? I'm going for the milestone today. And I got to be honest, I think once I hit this milestone, I think that's going to be it in terms of XRP. I think that's such a great number, a good number. And then I think that's it. I really do think that's it. I think I can really move from that and feel good. What is this? Oh, this teenager stuff, maybe. What is this? You know what I mean? So I don't know. Major milestone. You know how this major milestones are like people in a traditional space? Major milestones. Um, Major milestones income wise. Uh you know, not not like major, major, but major. So yeah, I think tell them it's crypto seeds. I'm like, so she shows me that the um that the stimulus money come in and uh oh she took like an hour or so, and then she comes in like, hey, can I can I do, you know, you know, I kind of want to, you know, uh, Miss Crypto Siege is, um, she is not a fan of debt. Like, like, not a fan. She's like, not a fan. <laughs> like, not a, so she is big on purchase payoff, purchase payoff, purchase payoff, purchase payoff. She's really, really good with that and uh which is great it's really great for me i have historically been a pay on time pay on time pay on time pay a little over the minimum pay on time i that's what i have historically have been and and i what i would do is i would take the extra cash and i would just I would invest it, but I would really invest a lot in learning. You know, you know, that was always my thing. So for the last 20 years, I kind of have always been my thing. Um, uh, but, you know, since me and Miss Crypto C's have been together, she's not, she's, she is great with, she doesn't just pay on time. She pays everything off. She's like, Pay it off, pay it off. No, no, no. She doesn't like balances, you know? And so, um, yeah, so she's like, you know, when we went, we went on our little excursion and uh, put it on a card and like, she's like, 
can I use this to do this? And I'm like, you remember that goal we had for XRP? You know, that stimulus could be, that would be, that would be more than enough to hit that goal. So we had to negotiate. <laughs> and the negotiation was, you know, the excursion was 1100. So you have a hundred. That's the, that's the, uh, <laughs> that was the negotiation, right? So yeah, she doesn't like it. She doesn't, does, which is great. It's been great. So she keeps, she definitely keeps me in chat because, you know, the money's there. I'm just always, I'm, I'm, I'm big on investing. I'm big in investing not only myself, but I'm really big in investing in my financial IQ. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm purchasing this thing. I'm purchasing that thing. I'm purchasing this thing. I don't spend it. I don't, you know, I'm not a, yeah, you know, like I don't, you know, I'm not a spender. I don't spend clothes and jewelry and I'm always investing in, in, in leveling up my education, my financial education, <laughs> big time. She's like, um, do you think we can go like 60 to 90 days on, um, you know, on not purchasing some financial education stuff? And that's just, you know, <laughs> she's so funny. She's great. She paid, like, we have zero balance. Like, she doesn't, she doesn't like balance. <laughs> I'm like, man, this balance has been on there. The balance has been on there for six days. Like, maybe, I don't know how long we've been back. Maybe eight days. She's like, oh, she's a trip. She's like, no, let's, you know. She, I mean, she comes in, you think we could, you know, you know, you think we could just, you know, pay that? <laughs> I'm like, I'm thinking of myself. It hasn't even been 10 days. I don't even think the balance is even recorded on the card. But, you know, that's how she is. I love her. I love her. Keeps me straight. Keeps me straight for sure. Guys, what a great day to be in the digital asset space. What a great day to be in the asset space. So, you know, instead of my usual, now I only have like a, a thousand to spend. <laughs> Taking that. <hard. laughs> so funny. Uh, yeah, so funny. Only kidding. So, yeah. So, what's going on, guys? Let me say, hey, what's up to everyone? PJ, PG Beats. What's going on, bro? Good to see you. Rob is in the building. What's up, Rob? Ralph Crandon is in the building. What's going on, fellas? Hey, Doobian 2. How are you, my friend? XRP number one. What's going on? Legendary, you can get that check yet, bro. What's coming? Are you getting direct deposit? I hope you're not waiting on that mail, brother. Because that is not going to be a good deal. Big G Wiley Cat is in the building. He got his as well. Good for you, bro. Yeah. Yeah, because what I wanted to do is to hit that milestone with XRP and then re-up on the other digital assets that I cashed out on. Because I, I, you know, I cashed out on at least five TNT, RCN. Um, it was at least five of them. Like, you know, yeah, I wanted to get back into the diverse, diversified portfolio instead of just VeChain, XRP, and Bitcoin. No, B chain, XRP, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to go on the higher risk stuff, read the rest, uh, you know, spread the portfolio on those. But she took the stimulus check, guys. She took it. It's gone. She took it. <laughs> when Mullet, what's going on, bro? So I'm going to hit the milestone, though. I'm, man, I got to tell you. Got to tell you that it's a significant milestone when you think that I did not start purchasing XRP until it was 20 cents. And then I sold at $2 and something, you know, and then, you know, obviously started getting back in. So I'm thinking my average purchases is right around the 25, 30 cents range. So... To hit this milestone, I think, considering I've been purchasing at the 25 and 30 cents range, I think it's, it's massive. It really, really is. I'm really, really excited about It's a nice, even number. So really, really, really excited about that, man. Jeez, I have said that about 12 times zero. What? 
What have you said about 12 times? XRP number one. <laughs> Chain link the interoperability for blockchains. If I get that stimulus, it's going into link of Tezos. How about that? It's not if, bro. It's when, TJ Jackson. It's just when, when you, when you get that. I hear you. I want to have some link and some Tezos. I'm, uh, I mean, I do have. I, I don't know. I don't even know what's going on with my Binance US. I know on the regular Binance, all I have is VeChain on there. And I think on the Binance US, I got Algo. I don't know. I don't even know. Got the Tezos on the ledger. GOXRP, what's up, my friend? When Mullet is in the building, what's good? Did I miss anyone? Crawfish, what's up, man? Be good to see you. Sahar, hello there. Hope everyone is doing well. How are you, Sahar? Good to see you on the stream, bro. So anyway, that's my that's the that's the inner that's the inner happenings at the Crypto Siege's home. This Crypto Siege will not hold the balance. We can forget about it. Bro, XRP, what's up, bro? We're getting close. Hitting the home stretch wonders. Absolutely, man. That is exactly right. So I wanted to cover this article about the World Bank digs deeper into DLT and fintech for financial inclusion. You know what? I think I, did I, I, think I might have screwed up the title a little bit. I'll do it later. I did screw that up. I did screw that up. Hold on, guys. <laughs> 37 people in the stream, 16 likes, guys. Do me a favor. If you, did, if you didn't get a chance to smash the like on the way in, just collapse the chat real quick. If you're enjoying the hangout, go smash that like and then come back and hang out. Appreciate that big time. It definitely helps the channel and the algorithm on YouTube. We want to get this channel out to as many of us as we can. We need more of us in this space. I was listening to Alex Mashinsky, guys, today. I got to tell you again. What a really, really, really sharp guy. Man, I tell you. I feel so good about being a part of the Celsius Network movement. I got to tell you. Oh, how about that, Sahar? I love that, bro. I'm sure you'll make that happen. Sahar says, hope to buy a house for my family within the next five to seven years. I hear you, bro. I wish that for you. Gold jewelry. How about that? TJ Jackson said it's wise to buy gold jewelry in times like these when you can't get physical coins. Okay. How about I did not know that because it is tough to get the physical coins. Yeah. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do, guys, I got to be honest with you, is uh, hit this milestone today. And uh, like it's so, it's so odd. It's so like I know that. You know, when you're when you're in a position where you're blessed that um, you could take months, months, nine, ten months, let's just say, and invest fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars a month in digital assets, and maybe in those twelve months, maybe one month was only five hundred. When you're blessed to be in a position like that, right? I mean, that's a big blessing. So nine to 12 months, 1,500 to 2,500 in digital assets, right? And the only reason why I say digital assets because some of the time I was buying BTC, I kept going back and forth with BTC and uh, you know, trying a little tra you know, trading thing. But it's been primarily BTC, XRP, right? So that's blessed to be able to do that. So, um, you know, oh, reached a milestone. Thank you, XRP number one. <laughs> I didn't know what I was talking about. I am rambling on. And so I'm thinking about this milestone and I'm thinking that I should be good with XRP. I, I think, I think you got to realize how blessed 
we are and not I don't know. It's just I don't want to say this, but I'm gonna say it. And not be greedy. You know, and this is just for me, I'm not saying this to you guys. Right? Right? So if you know that you know what you hold, um, that milestone is significant. It's not, and I'll give you a hint. It's not DAI milestone, digital asset investor, right? So we're talking about a guy who was owning XRP in 2014, right? So DAI, you know, I mean, it's, it's very obvious, right? You know, kind of the position he would be, right? Purchasing XRP of 2014, right? So I didn't start purchasing XRP until 2017, right? Um, 2017, purchased it, sold it, stayed away from it because I was messing around in a high yield investment program. Right. Wow. Then eventually came back around to, you know what, I just need the greatest digital I've ever created. And so, yeah, it took 12 months of just voting myself into purchasing XRP found in Bitcoin. So to hit kind of hit that milestone, I think is huge. And I, I don't want to feel like, I don't know, you know. It's it's kind of hard to explain, but I don't want to feel like I'm being greedy. I don't know. It's kind of one of those things. That's kind of you know it's very it's it's an odd it's an odd deal because I know, yeah, because you can get on a rich list, so you can check that out, and I know the numbers in the wallets, right? You know, a certain amount of people who have a hundred or five hundred, certain amount of people who have a thousand, certain amount of people have five thousand, right? <laughs> And, uh, and I know, you know, when I talk to people and different things, you know, you know, people are, you know, when I get 200, I'm getting some XRP. I get a hundred bucks. I'm getting some XRP. You know, I'm getting, when I get 500, I'm getting some, right. You know, this type of deal, you know, and I, and I guess I say that and I, and, and I, and I did all of this conversation because you know, twelve hundred dollars for people—that's a significant amount of money. And when I think about that, I've, I've, I'm so excited for people who have made the decision on their own, on their own, that they're using that to get XRP. I'm so excited for them. You know, I'm real—I really am I'm so excited for them that they're going to be able to do it. Now, some people need that twelve hundred, like. You know, but there's some people that are probably still kind of getting paid, you know, in, in, in this world, in this beer cold world, and they're able to take that 1200 And it might be the first time that they've been able to put that much into XRP at one time. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm, I'm really happy for them. And it's, it's very, very humbling to say that. And I only, sh I only share that with, you know, with my family here. Where I would, like, my family doesn't know that in the last, you know, um, you know, prior to, let's say, last year, 2019, that I, you know, that I was investing in digital assets like that amount of money, 1500 uh, 2500 Every now and then I sneak another 500 <laughs> Didn't even tell Miss Crypto Seeds, you know, <laughs> spend three grand in a month, right? So those, that's a less position to be able to do something like that and I, I want to make sure that you know not overdoing something I guess so I'm probably going to do is um not probably I'm going to start putting my money where my mouth is with the high with the cash the, the high cash value life insurances um so that I can um share with you guys my experience in going through that. I just got access to um to the uh the life to the experts who are familiar with putting them together with the PUA writers, with the e, uh the MEC limits. Uh what is it? It's modern uh, yeah, ME, MEC limits. Modified endowment 
contracts and the PUA positive, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, assets, paid up, paid up assets, PUA writer. So I'm going to share that journey with you guys. Um, I found out that Gary Gunderson, actually, he started at uh, 50 bucks a month with his. You know, started out 50 bucks with his first policy and then he upped it. James Shepard, what's up, my friend? All right, guys, let's go over this article. I've been rambling long enough. Elizabeth's at work. Be careful out there, my friend. Good to see you, miss. Glad to see you in the stream. GOXOP, thanks, you, man. I appreciate you saying that. Tommy Ingram, what's up, bro? What's good with you, Tommy? John C. is in the building. Peter Stedman, what's up, my good dude? What's going on? All you need to become rich in your bags is XRP, V Chain, Stellar, Lumen, in my opinion. I, I, I'm liking, I'm liking two. I'm loving two out of those three, Luis. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. It's already 10x, 10 years. So GOXOP, the, the the deal is, is is it a long-term project, right? We all have to come to our own conclusion after doing our own homework. Is that a long-term project? That's kind of the situation. Is it a long-term project? And right now, I'm messing around with TNT and RCN, um, uh, Cryptarium. Uh, I think Zero X was one of the, you know, the Tika's five. I'm playing around with those. I sold them to get more XRP because I kept changing. You know how you got, you know how we are, right? We change our goals for XRP. <laughs> you know, well, oh, you hit this goal, you hit this goal, you hit this goal, then you change. Ah, you know what? I'm going to set a new goal for XRP. You hit the goal, you hit the goal. You know, I'm going to set a new goal. And so, yeah, so I, you know, I see that XRP getting below 13 cents. I'm like, yeah, see you later. T TNT or RCN. So you have to decide you XRP, right? And the 10X has already happened. Don't know. Is it a long-term deal, right? Did I say? Nunya business. <laughs> What's up, Nunya? I hope I didn't put D-I-C-K-S deeper on my, in my uh, thing there. <laughs> 51 people on the stream, 26 likes, guys. Do me a favor. If you haven't already, just collapse the chat real quick. Go smash that like. And come back and hang out. Jared XRP, how are you, bro? How are you? $50 is 250 XRP? Really? Huh. That's not good. $250. Uh, we'll see. I'm really looking for that milestone. Purple Kush. <laughs> all right guys so let's do this let's go with this article i think it's important remember we talked about you know the world economic forum world bank imf un uh um the people from the sec whatever these major institutions the imf you know, when it comes to DLT and blockchain technology, they're always like, wah, 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 wah. when you bring in cross-border payments, when you bring that up, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that makes sense. Yep, DLT, yep, right there. Yep, that makes sense. Right, So, and they're all in agreement. That's a great space to start in implementing and taking advantage of DLT, right? So important to, to note because this just, look, there's one person ahead of the game when it comes to cross-border payments and DLT. And that is the ginormous entity that is triple. That's just, just a fact, right? So when you see this article, and by the way, I'm very happy for DAI. I mean, it takes a lot of courage to to stay in the space, you know, from 2014. Like the only person that I know has been in the space longer than him is the modern investor. Modern investor. Think about what he's had to go through and weather through. Think about the storms he has to has to weather through to 
to get to where he wants to go. Hold on one second, my friends. Uh, five, two, four. Welcome. So, um, you know, I'm I, I'm happy for him, excited for him, but very very few people, or you know, were in that position to do that. So I'm happy for him. 2014, you kidding me? How blessed is that? All right, so check out this article, guys. Shout out to Coin Telegraph. Uh, apparently, this is a contributing art, uh, author is Helen Parts. World Bank digs deeper into DLT. By the way, shout out to my dude, Alex Yeet. He sent this to me. Stay safe on the roads, Alex Yeet. World Bank digs deeper into DLT and fintech for financial inclusion. That's going to be a real catchphrase, that financial inclusion. You know, that 2 billion plus people that have a cell phone but that are unbanked, right? So financial institutions all over the world are increasingly experimenting with emerging technologies like blockchain to streamline payment systems and achieve financial inclusion. In a new study, the World Bank has once again emphasized blockchain's potential for financial inclusion. Issued by the Bank for International Settlements, the BIS, on April 14, the new report from the World Bank on payment aspects of financial inclusion in the fintech era outlines a wide number of crypto and blockchain related concepts like stable coins, central bank digital currencies. In the 70 page report, the bank provided a detail. What's up? You need another one? Uh, 8701. That's Miss Miss Crypto Seeds um, doing the zero balance uh, thing. <laughs> um, streamline payment systems and achieve finance. No, I read that. So in the seventy-page report, the bank provided a detailed overview of selected advances in technology that are considered to be the most relevant to payments, as well as described in their applications and associated risk. And associated risk. Yeah, well, anyway, I saw somewhere someone tweeted out that 1200 was going to get them 6,000 XRP. Did you guys see that? I'll get to this in a second. That 1200... 1200 was going to get 6300 XRP. Did you guys see that? I saw that on Twitter. Corey Anderson, what's going on, my friend? Just having a beer, not long now. Good to see you, Corey. That's right, XRP number one. Companies must look at Ripple and say, no point going down that route, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so I saw that 1200 can get you um, 6,300 plus XRP. Is that right? Anybody do the math on that? I saw that this morning. Maybe that was a tweet from a couple of days ago. Let me see if I, uh, I saved that. Did I save it? Yep. My bank thing was down big time. Problems at City, problems at Wells Fargo, problems at Chase, problems at U.S. Bank. I don't know if that's because of the paper, payroll protection thing or what, but let's see. Did I copy that? Nope, doesn't look like I did. But I did see on Twitter that that 1200 would get you 6330 Is that it? Nope, that's not it. Who can do the math on that real quick? Yes, close enough at 18.25. There you go. 61.86 on Coinbase right now, says Jared XRP. Yeah. 1,200 equals 6,300. There you go. There you go. Aha. There you go. 
five for one is is six thousand. Yeah, I think I would be better at my math, but I'm. Yeah, so I'm just thinking to myself. Yep, and I better do it now before something else happens. Flip the switch, Corey Anderson says. <laughs> so let me finish this article, right? So extended version of 2016 PAFI report. The new report reiterates and enhances the guidance developed in the report on payment aspects of financial inclusion issued by the World Bank in collaboration with Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure in 2016. Basically, the latest report sets out fintech-focused key aspects, putting them, in, putting them in the context of the generated PAFI guidance, which was formulated in a tech-neutral way and did not include developments like blockchain. All right. Among major uh, PAFI tools, the World Bank listed distributed ledger technology, um, stable coins, CBDCs and payment tokenization system, placing them in line with other fintechs like big data anal an uh, analytics and cloud computing. Combining several technology products and access models, the World Bank drew up the so-called PAF fintech wheel to identify fintech developments that are potentially relevant to the payments aspects of financial inclusion. Got to see over here, got that electronic wallets things going on. Absolutely. Distributed ledger technology, universal access to and frequent usage of transaction accounts, digital, DLT, DIT, Internet of Things, the instant payments. I just, it's just, it's great, great news that the World Bank is understanding that. And DLT is just, it's almost code for XRP and my, really it is. Stablecoins prompted CBDC investigation for more efficient cross-border payments. I mean, this is cool, but what's going on with the people looking at the CBDCs now talking about strict regulations and... And possibly banning. The World Bank's previous interest in blockchain to drive financial inclusion. The World Bank's focus report on inclusion is not the organization's first. Okay, in late 2017, the World Bank published an extensive report titled Distributed Ledger Technology and Blockchain, emphasizing that DLT implementation of financial inclusion requires the development of important. Uh -huh, uh, Accompanying comp components like interoperability with traditional payment services and effective oversight. The report also describes in detail major cryptos like B BTC and ETH, as well as other public blockchains. Yeah, so great, great job there, my friend. Great job, Helen. Great job. Let me see if I can pull up this, this crazy thing that's going on with the CBDCs right now. Only because, I mean, the Financial Stability Board, I mean, what's going on with this kind of, I don't want to say attack, but this, all of a sudden, this kind of move to be really, really strict. Is, is, aren't, aren't we seeing on, on crypto Twitter, this is about, you know, a significant harm? Uh, a significant harm to... Bitcoin? Do I have it here? Here it is right there. Do I have it it's right there? Central banks recommended to ban stable coins. I don't know if they said they were. I know it was part of their parameter. Central banks pushed for heavy duty regulation of centralized, privately issued global stable coins. And Consider prohibiting decentralized ones. Wow. So fiat pegged cryptos are coming under scrutiny based on recommendations 
on the Financial Stability Board. I'm going to go over the key takeaways for now, according to Crypto Briefing. The Financial Stability Board outlined 10 recommendations to central banks for regulating stablecoins, including outright prohibition. The Financial Stability Board is an international entity that provides suggestions on the global financial system. It comprises central banks and finance ministries from major G20 economies. The recommendations are to be presented before an audience of G20 countries and reference major stable coins, Tether, DC, True USD, Paxos, and DAI. Given the market's heavy resilience on st- or heavy reliance on stable coin, stable coins, a ban could mean disaster for Bitcoin and the broader crypto market. So that's an interesting thing right there, right? <laughs> yeah, with mullet. Yeah, I do, right? I really do have like I'm 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 wondering if I'm gonna break my, the bookmark record, the greatest bookmarker of all times. <laughs> so that's interesting that this is coming out. What do you guys think about the timing of this coming out from the Financial Stability Board? At one time, wasn't it? Wasn't at one time it was like kumbaya when it came to CBDCs. I mean, as of late, I mean, prior to this, wasn't it? I mean, push for central bank digital currencies, how this could be great, great. It could be just great thing. Now the Financial Stability Board is, is saying this. That's interesting. Don't you think? Don't you think? I find that to be very, very interesting. The closer we get, the more they panic. That's so true. When mullet, so true, bro. Before that, before the having, interesting timing, right? And I, I don't know if they're gonna go all the way one way and completely ban it. Uh, but I do, I do think that they're gonna. It's gonna be interesting. The ones they're gonna, you know, the CBDCs that they're gonna let kind of stay. Is this in response to China and what they're doing? I mean. I don't know. When Mullet says Siege has the whole internet bookmark. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all happening quickly now, says Corey Anderson. Yeah, so interesting timing. And look, I don't I'm not worried about uh the digital asset space. I just think it's interesting that because at one time they were all in favor of these central bank digital currencies and and now the FSB is saying, what is privatized, private centralized? What is that? Is private centralized like a China CBDC? Right? I mean, that's what it says. It says uh, privately issued global state. So heavy duty regulation of centralized, privately issued global stable coins and considering prohibiting decentralized ones. So. Privately issued global stable coin. Is that or what I mean, are they saying that they don't want China to have their own? I just don't get it. Yeah. David Schwartz said XRP could be stable coin. Yes, it did. Yes, he did, rather. Paul Bogo, good morning to you. It's, it's 7 a.m. in Melbourne. How about that? Got Wealth Wednesdays coming up. I'm excited about that tonight. 7 o'clock Eastern Time, guys. Generational Wealth Wednesdays every 7 p.m. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So, what's the deal with that? All of a sudden, now they're saying they want to kind of, I don't know, interesting. It, and does that, it, how does that, I don't know, how does that look for Bitcoin? Pressure drop. You know, I don't know. What does that look like for Bitcoin? I honestly don't know. I'm asking you guys. I don't know. 
But the fact that they, you know, strict regulations, I mean, it's it's not like they weren't going to have strict regulations anyway. Right? It's not like they weren't going to do that anyway. So what's the what's the need for I want to kind of put that out there now. I don't know. Did someone hear something? Did I hear something about... Um, sounds like a push for regs, yeah. That... Uh, I heard that there was a 600 bucks um, stimulus coming as well. For like from the Fed in terms of unemployment or something. That's what I heard. Like the Fed was doing one and the states were doing one. So I don't know. Is that the 1200 I don't know. I think BTC has more pressure from climate activists. That's what I think too as well, uh, Wayne Mullet. Did you guys see the Reopen America board? Or Yeah, I guess it would be board. That the Donald put together. Anybody catch that picture of the Reopen America board that the Donald put together? Did you guys see the pic in that? Did you see the members? Yeah, free money everywhere. I got to tell you. If I have time today, I'm going to finish that up. Hit that milestone. Celebrate. Just kind of get it done. Got to oh, I can use the Binance US. I don't mess around with that Coinbase anymore. Binance US is cheaper than Coinbase. You can use your you can use your bank card. No, you can use your bank card and get it done. Is that what Mark Cuban is on? No, no. Let me see if I can find that for you guys, and then I'll be right back. Let me check something. Because I am pretty sure I kept that picture. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, there it is right there. Cool. Let me share this with you guys. Trump? Yeah. All right, so let me share, change this view. Check this out, guys. Yeah, so, you know, let me share it with you. So check that out. Official officials on council to reopen America. All right, so Kushner is on it, Kudlow's on it, and Wilbur Ross. Who, anybody know who Wilbur Ross is? Kushner and Wilbur Ross, Ross really, it's an interesting thing there. JT Josh, what's up, bro? Good to see you. <laughs> so if he's putting the board together, we're months away from opening. Yeah, I know. I mean, he threw that May out there like like that was possible. I don't, I don't see it. What? Where is real? What? What role does Wilbur Ross? Is he holding um some uh, appointment there as part of the presidential cabinet? So my understanding is Wilbur. Wilbur Ross is a former, or maybe even present, advisor, uh, lawyer slant advisor to the Rothschilds. You guys remember Wilbur Ross helped um, structure 
kind of like the refinance deal for one of uh he's the common secretary there you go um for one of uh the trump's uh casinos i don't know if it was the taj mahal or some other one but yeah but, but prior to coming in and, and negotiating that new um But, you know, Rothschild, very, very much tied and linked to the Rothschilds. And Kushner, Reopen America, and Jared Kushner is on there. Interesting stuff. So, yeah, Fixer. Yeah, without question. Yep. Interesting um, uh, council. <laughs> very, very interesting council. Reopen America. So, yeah, it is coming soon, guys. It's coming very, very soon. So, guys, I, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this whole new thing with the CBDCs. I don't know if it's going to spell too much for um, for BTC. We shall soon see. I think BTC has a lot of challenges going forward. Because, I again, I said this before, it feels as though there's a push, a concerted, focused effort to dethrone BTC. I really, really do. Frankie James, I never saw it. Yeah. So... We all know Kushner. We all know that Mnuchin and Kushner and the Donald. We're certain that they know about Ripple and XRP. Like, there's no question. You got Greg Kidd and, and Kushner, Ken Kirsten and uh, Kushner. The ties are there. They definitely know. I believe in my heart of hearts that Ripple and XRP are part of the Donald's plan. President Donald Trump just don't know if it's Plan A. B or C. I think ultimately the stock market and how well the economy is doing on election is his plan A. Uh, don't know where XRP and Ripple fit in, but I, I just have a strong feeling that it does. Yeah. Corey Anderson, best mates with Steve. Uh, who who is that? Uh, Boba Ross and Mnuchin? Really? Yeah, I can see that. So we'll see how it goes, guys. It's still exciting times. Listen, guys, I'm going to hop off here because I got to get ready for Wealth Wednesday, Generation of Wealth Strategies. We're going to talk a couple of interesting things. I came across some more information about the cash value life insurances. I want to share with you guys. I'm excited about sharing the journey with you guys as I uh, put my money where my mouth is with that as well. So, yeah, every single Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, Generational Wealth Wednesdays, we call it. Really excited about sharing with you guys with that. So, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I'll see you guys later on today, uh, this evening at 7 p.m. Eastern, if you want to hang out and talk wealth strategies. I'm I'm really excited about this. I really am. And Celsius Network, we're going to talk about that as well. And earning, I'm going to put out there right now, earning gold on your gold. Celsius Network. Earning gold on your gold. Uh, what? Yeah. So it's going to be very interesting to see how he does that. Because he said in his personal portfolio, he doesn't deal with the physical. So, I don't know how they're going to do the gold on the gold, but that's what he's doing. That's the next thing, gold on their gold. Interesting. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate it big time. I'll see you guys tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to end this video like I do all my videos and remind you of this. Old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather us remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in, where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating? Or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought, and the victory yours.
go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.